Hello, Rob here from the Flanagan Homestead. It's Friday night, May 28th. I'm loading up the truck. I want to talk to you a little bit about what we're doing tomorrow morning uh, because tomorrow I'll just be, it'll be go time and uh, I won't have time to film it. But we're putting Ultor on tomorrow morning at sunrise. Um, we're going to do this to kill the aphids. I'll show you some of the damage that it's starting to do the, to the grand fir trees. Uh, the nobles aren't being affected yet. The nobles have barely got new branches growing out. The grand firs are now four or five inches out and we're already seeing aphid damage, which the aphids really get after the grand firs more so than my other varieties. Nobles, they affect some. I will need to spray them, but that's not going to be happening uh, in today's video. I can wait till longer. And the Nordmans, I pretty much don't even need to worry about it. The Nordmans are so tough. Uh, fantastic tree and uh, aphids don't seem to bother them. So anyway, uh, we will be spraying Ultor. I get this at Valley Egg from Valley Egg in Chehalis. Uh, this is about, this is 48 ounces and it's about $200. Um, it's supposed to be applied at about 12 ounces per acre, give or take, depending on your situation. Uh, we do this in a backpack sprayer. I got a steel sprayer that holds three gallons of water in it or three gallons of mix and it, it sprays out. I've got an on off switch right here uh, for flow of water or whatever I have in there. And uh, this has been great for a small farmer because I could spray stuff on the trees and I don't have to have a tractor with a blower or anything. So uh, we will be applying about three ounces uh, per tank full because we've figured out the rate that we do there. And so I'll be working up and down the fields uh, blowing this on the trees and Barry will be mixing and then help me put the pack on. This could get heavy. Not that I can't put it on, but it's just he mixes, pours it in. I put the pack on and go. And we actually get this uh, job done really quickly. Um, we need to have a surfactant. And, you know, I was calling the people at Valley Egg just to double check and make sure I'm doing everything right. Because sometimes you get lazy after doing it year after year. And they said, yeah, definitely use a surfactant, but avoid the non-ionic, but use the... Uh, organic, I forget the term, I'll, I'll put it in the notes here. And we didn't have any of that actually here in town. I know I have some surfactant out at the farm and I hope that it's the right one, but that actually helps draw it up. The beautiful thing about Ultor is it's both a contact killer. If it hits aphids, it'll kill it on contact, but it's also systemic. It draws it in to the plant and takes it down to the root and this will kill the aphids on the branches and it'll also kill root aphids. So um, we don't have to use any other chemical other than Ultor. We've been using it basically since we've started the farm 17 years ago when we started having to spray for aphids. Um, we are being encouraged to rotate to something else so that they don't build up a tolerance to it, but it's worked so well for us. So probably next year we're going to switch to something else, but we've been using Ultor successfully for, well, about almost 20 years. Okay, double checking my notes. Uh, they're recommending the surfactant to be a methylated seed oil or MSO surfactant as opposed to an NIS. Um, Sometimes I always forget what all these terms mean, but one works better than the other, so they want us to use an MSO when we're using the Ultor. This is one of those jobs that you can definitely do by yourself, but it's so much faster and so much nicer when other people are there. I'm the only person that's going to be spraying. I have the backpack. I, we have one backpack sprayer and go up and down, but uh, you could do a tank full in, you know, just a few minutes. And it's about the same amount of time it takes someone to mix up uh, some Ultor in a bucket, have it ready. They, you get done with a tank, he pours it in, puts it back on your back, and you get going. So we can, uh, I'm suspecting, and I'll, I'll time it, and we'll check it at the end of the video, but I'm suspecting that we'll do the thousand grand furs on that one acre in 20 minutes. So you might be asking, why are we going out? Uh, why am I going out so early on Saturday morning? Uh, they recommend that for two things. Uh, there's a, with this backpack sprayer, the droplets are small enough that uh, they'll blow around in the wind. And two, you want to do it before the bees are out. If you're spraying on a bunch of bees and other insects that you don't want killed, uh, you can cause some problems. So you minimize the damage to other things if you get up there, get out there and you do it as quickly as you can. Uh, right after sunrise. Good morning. 
I'm gonna be putting on my rain gear just in case I'm walking through any of the plants that I got the chemical on I don't need this brushing back on my legs so always best to keep the chemical off of you so many of you know I'm not a big fan of using too much chemical and I want to keep it off of me as well so I've got the rain gear on I'm gonna pull this hoodie over my head pull it tight just in case there's a mist settling back down it'll settle on that I will be wearing a respirator and stuff to keep it away from my eyes better to be safe than sorry Okay, I've finished the Grand Furs in 25 minutes. Uh, I told you it wouldn't take very long. Uh, it's less than an acre, but uh, I came out to use the rest of the tank on the Nobles, although it's not necessarily time to do it. But uh, there was a gap in this tree, and I noticed probably the worst I've ever seen a, a patch of aphids on one of our Nobles. So if you come in here closer, you can see this is really bad here. We've got some older ones and we've got the smaller, younger ones in there. And then if you go down to the patch below, there's a lot more in there. And see, they are, they are just sucking the pitch or the sap right out of this tree. And they're really gonna do a lot of damage. We did check the trees around here and we don't see anything like that, but uh, we definitely gonna get some spray on this tree really heavy. And it won't be long till we're doing all of the nobles here soon. Thanks for joining me and my business partner, Barry, once again on the Flanagan Homestead and East Fork Christmas Tree Farms, where Christmas trees are my business, teaching, including horticulture, is my job, and outdoor projects are my passion. Join us again soon. We're going to be shearing Christmas trees and uh, showing you the signs that we built. Have a good day.